Hi everybody, this is Mike Farrow back again in Greenwich, Connecticut at Isabella Garucho's Fine Art. And we're so lucky to have Alex Tremper here with us today to talk about this amazing location and fine art and how it kind of rolls into lifestyle and uh, real estate. Um, thank you so much for being with us today and having us uh, at your gallery. Thank you for making the trip out. How long have you guys been here? This location, six years. In Greenwich, seven years. We started on East Putnam Ave, um, and then this space became available, and it was just a lot more conducive to what we wanted to do. Going into 22, be making some additional changes. Um, but right now, it's a, it's a perfect space to show art. Speaking generally uh, in real estate, interior design, new clientele coming in during the super hot market into Greenwich. Art and art pieces, fine art pieces, play such a huge role in somebody's interior design. This gallery and this kind of art, what can somebody, a consumer, look for and what would be the kind of pieces that might flow really well into the styles of homes here? It's a real personal thing. Um, what we've tried to do is curate a collection of artists, both blue chip investment art, uh, like Kenny Scharf, Keith Haring, Warhol, but not make that our focus. We have top tier artists like Paul Manis, Tyler Shield, Jimmy Nelson, David Yarrow, but we wanted to provide also a range in yeah. terms of pricing. So our price point starts as low as $800 for some of the smaller pieces, some small collages and then works its way up to a couple million dollars a piece. Okay. There's no real cookie cutter answer to what, what clients are looking for, which is why we created a portfolio that's really diverse across many right. genres, pop, contemporary, completely abstract, photography, sculpture, and something that doesn't exist in Greenwich now. Um, we looked at the market very closely and realized that we wanted to bring new art to Greenwich. That's the thing about art, right? Mm -hmm there's something for everybody. There is. So even me walking up and down in your gallery, there's some stuff when I look, hmm, okay. To somebody that makes a lot of, that, that works. And then I see something here, like I love the donut. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that style art. And I have a lot of clients who like that style art. The art that you're talking about, bring something new. Talk a little bit more about that for the clientele and kind of what you guys are bringing into 2022 and going forward. Artists from all over the world. The artist that you're talking about, the donut piece, that's yeah. Peter. Yeah. Um, he's actually from Canada. What we've tried to focus on is, like I said, a very diverse portfolio where we have something that fits almost every every aesthetic Correct. Um, and every medium. A, a great balance between photographers and painters, because again, not everybody wants a painting mm. on their wall. And what we've uncovered is that there is a greater demand right now for photography. I'm in that camp. I yeah. like the photography, yeah. Tyler Shields, who happens to be and has become a really good friend of mine, is probably the person that I buy the most of. Okay. Always something that's personal. And that's what, when we're dealing with clients, I want that same feeling. I want it to be something when they look at it, there's this story behind it for them. Yeah. So it's not always just an easy process of showing a client something, this is what it's worth and put it on the wall. And that's an investment, you know, of time, energy. And for me, it's worth it. Well, this is high-end lifestyle. This is high-end art. These are people who have means to mm -hmm. make a substantial purchase in, like you said, a blue chip product where something that they're going to hold, they know it's going to go up in value or something they just really like. How do you go through the pricing? Like, how does that work? With with, with yourself? Is it more through the, the actual creator of the art or do you guys design the price out? How does that work? So all the living artists set their prices and their prices are substantiated with years of sales mm -hmm. um, and then supported by auction records okay. at times if they've ever gone out to auction. Established artists like Andy Warhol and Keith Haring, what you do is you take auction history, see what's available in the marketplace and then you come up with a price based on what's out there in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, in some instances, when pieces are left on consignment, the seller tells you what they want to get out of it, you tell them what it's worth, and then that's what you sell it for. So, trends, mm -hmm. right? Real estate's all about trends. Different clients come from different locations, looking for different products, and the interior design of the houses also matter, and what somebody had Brass is cool, then brass is not cool, brass is in, brass, you know, whatever. All right. So for you, do you see the same trends in art? Or do you have like, nope, it's been a money maker for the last 20 years, it's gonna to continue to be a money maker? Art is something that can completely change the look and feel of a home. You know, no matter how good the designer, no matter what's going on in the home, no matter the architecture that surrounds it, 
If you have a piece that doesn't fit in a space, it can throw everything off. Considering a budget for good art makes a huge difference in a home. Um, and that's gonna be true till the end of time. And not everything needs to be an investment piece of art. You can buy affordable art because it's beautiful and you connect with it, understanding that it may never go up in value. Not everything has to be an Andy Warhol. Not everything has to be a Picasso. Not everything has to be a Keith Haring or a Basquiat. There are pieces that people are drawn to and it's the personal connection with the story of the artist and who they are and what they're trying to communicate that resonates with that individual. Some pieces are guaranteed to go up in value quickly based on the trajectory of the artist's career. Some pieces will maintain value and it's your tried and true investment. And then some pieces you just buy because you genuinely love them and want to be around that type of energy that the art yeah. transmits. The people that come in, whether they're off the street or do some homework as to what's the best Best, the best in Greenwich as far as art galleries, art dealers, and they come in here, how many of them are already educated in this world as opposed to how many that you're like, well, we gotta start from square one and explain this to you? It's like anything. I mean, you have people who are day traders who kind of understand what they're doing, um, but the vast majority of people, even the most advanced collectors are still looking for someone who can give them new bits of information that's actually my greatest joy is taking the time to, you know, help them to understand what they're buying so that they feel confident in what they're doing and the decisions that they're making. Very, very true. So Isabella Garucho is, this is your mom. Yep. I, my mom was Isabel Trimper for 40 years and that's how she built her career. 15 years ago when I, you know, at the collapse of the markets, um, my mom and I sat down and made the decision to work together. Um, and part of that decision was also changing her name back to her maiden name, Garucho, because it was time for her to create a new chapter in her life um, with a new identity. And that's how we started off. We started off as art dealers selling online only. And then seven years ago, we opened up a venue on East Putnam and she just loved it, I loved it. And then we moved here and it's just been a natural progression. That's been the evolution of our business. What has your mom taught you about art in, uh, in the business? Art is, is, a, is a commodity, but the people that make it are not. My artists, for the most part, are like my family that relationship with each person, having that bond with them, hearing their struggles, their pains, their successes, their losses, and working with them to build something using their work is just, it's a magical experience from getting it here in the gallery and putting it into someone's home, you're able to communicate so much more about the pieces, understanding the people who make it. We are the only minority owned, operated, and staffed business in Greenwich. That's incredible. Listen, the, the art world is a very sophisticated place and it has huge barriers to entry. I grew up understanding that discrimination for a multitude of reasons prevented people from having the opportunity to make the life for themselves that they wanted. And I wanted to provide a place where people who otherwise would have never applied could come, mm -hmm. learn, and even if it is just as an intern, as a stepping stone, that their experience here could create for them a pathway to the lives that they want mm -hmm. to live. And offering that to minorities, especially in this town, is something that's super important because Greenwich is a very socially conscious area. There are tons of charities. People are attending charities and donating all the time. But when it comes to the workforce in, in upper class and super sophisticated environments, it's just not something that is always available. And being a minority myself, I, I want it to be a fully inclusive workplace. Yeah. In 2022, where do you see marketing and branding of art galleries, art dealers, and this sort of thing going? Is it, is it changing? The space is kind of changing in how you get the word out now and what you do? I prefer to look for what people are not doing and be the trendsetter. Mm. So mm. Our, we've spent the last year and a half redesigning our website and we're going to a completely transparent price model where we have an almost entirely 
hybrid e-commerce website where all of our prices are visible. Yeah. Nothing is priced on request. There's no one in Greenwich doing that so right smart. now. So smart. People do not have the bandwidth to sit and go to get the consultation or to ask for the estimate of the quote because they understand what that's going to become. Yep. Just lay it out what it is. People are used to that now. And it stops people from inquiring on things that they legitimately may love but know they can't afford and you know we get a lot of initial inquiries right now with no responses when they see the price yeah that's a waste of time for us and it's a waste of time for the client because they get excited about something that is outside of the scope of their budget when we can or they can through their own searches direct themselves to things that they can afford that is within budget. People are used to Amazon now, Walmart now, and product being high, low. They mm -hmm. look at everything through screens, yep. even on fine art. You can just lay it out there. 40 West Putnam Avenue, Isabella Garucho, Alex Tremper. You have got to come here and check out this place. The art is incredible. The people here are incredible, and you have to meet Alex. He is incredible. Like, comment, subscribe, and everybody, until next time.